اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ let's continue our discussion on the metal forming process in the last lecture in lecture number 10 we and 11 we discuss fundamentals of metal forming in which we discuss how the flow stress works and the difference between the engineering stress and the true stress and the effect of a strain rate on the Uh, material during the hot working so in this chapter we are going to discuss each type of bulk deformation process separately so let's start with our first type of bulk deformation process that is rolling operation so uh, again uh, where we are standing right now uh, we are basically discussing the bulk deformation among the deformation among the deformation process we are discussing bulk deformation process and in the bulk deformation process we are going to discuss rolling operation right we have forging extrusion and wire drawing wire and the bar drawing so briefly we'll briefly discuss the background of the rolling operation rolling operation as the name suggests is a deformation process it's a bulk deformation process and uh, what was the identification of the bulk deformation process was it's a type of metal forming process in which we achieve the significant shape change our purpose is the attainment of the significant shape change and that shape change is achieved by applying the stresses or producing the plastic deformation so that's why it is a type of deformation process so it is used in the parts whose initial form is bulk rather than the sheet and if you remember what is a bulk what was a bulk which has the lower surface area, surface area to volume ratio while the sheet has the greater surface area to volume ratio so the common starting materials in the rolling operation are the cylindrical bars billets and some rectangular billets slabs and similar shapes you will see what the billets and the uh, blooms and uh, what they are actually so how does it work the pro this process work by stressing metal sufficiently to cause plastic flow into the desired shape so and they are performed as a cold warm and the hot working so these are some the same things which you have discussed in the last chapter what is the purpose of this it produces shapes uh, inexpensively or uh, without much cost it's cheap process uh, to produce shape change uh, the final product has a good mechanical properties and the 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 thing last thing is important one it has a little or no waste so what is the rolling operation rolling operation is a deformation process in which work thickness is reduced by compressive forces exerted by two opposing rolls like this one so the two opposing rolls are not only because by the by the rotation they are not only pulling the work piece into this gap once the work piece enter into this gap they apply the compressive forces to reduce the thickness of the slab right so in the last lecture while we were discussing the introduction of the rolling i said that these rolls are pushing uh, the work piece so uh i would like to rectify that uh, it was actually the work these rolls are pulling the work piece into this gap and applying the compressive forces to reduce the uh, cross section or the thickness so the what is the starting work out starting work piece the work starts out as a steel ingot or the cast iron steel ingot uh, that is just solidified you know uh, we use casting operation to form ingot and as you know in casting operation material is molten for in the molten form so it solidifies to form the ingot so while the material is still hot due to the casting just solidified while it is still hot this whole ingot is placed into the furnace this whole hot ingot is placed in the furnace so what is the purpose of putting this in the furnace so that once it is placed inside the furnace for a long period of time so it will have a uniform temperature throughout so the <coughs> so the plastic deformation that is produced uh, will be uniform in, in all the regions of this workpiece 
so for this purpose uh, let's suppose a steel in cord the desired temperature for rolling is around 1200 degrees centigrade so it is it will be placed inside the furnace and this process of placing the ingot into the furnace for the sake of homogenizing the temperature or to attain the uniform temperature throughout that process is known as the soaking and the furnace that are used for this purpose are termed as the soaking bits so what are the common shapes that we can achieve from the rolling operations or different types of the rolling process we are starting with the ingots that ingots are deformed into the blooms or the billets or the slabs so the starting work piece with this one by using the simple rolling operation we can transform them into the blooms and billets or the slabs so these blooms and billets can be further used to form either bars or which are f have a further uh, lesser cross sectional area or they can be shape rolled there is a special kind of rolling that is will be performed on it on these billets and blooms they will be shape rolled to form certain shapes or the slabs can be further compressed to form the plates or the sheets and strips so these are some common shapes that can be achieved by different kind of rolling operations and you will see this in the slides ahead in this lecture so the rolling operation can be divided based on two things the first one uh, the geometry of the work and the second one the temperature of the work as the temperature of the work we have discussed in the last lecture so we can have the hot rolling operation that is a hot working or we can have the cold rolling operation if the we are performing the hot rolling so our main purpose is to uh, large to produce large amount of deformation our main purpose of the hot rolling would be to cause significant plastic deformation or shape change while if you are performing the cold rolling our purpose would be to produce high strength sheets or to increase the strength of the material the workpiece while the other basis of the classification is the geometry of the work what kind of product we are obtaining so based on that rolling can be of two types either the flat rolling or we can have the shape rolling flat rolling which is just reduced to thickness uh, used to reduce the thickness of a rectangular cross so we have just a slab so the flat rolls are applying pressure over it to uh, flat rolls will be applying pressure over it right so only purpose would be to reduce the thickness of the slab while in the case of the shape rolling the, we can have the shapes uh, on the rolls on the work the rolls that are performing the rolling operation to attain the desired shape in our final part so we can form the eye beams on different kinds of beams using the shape rolling operation and you will see how does it occur in the types of mills that are used to form the, perform the shape rolling operation so how does it work as we have discussed it works uh, in two steps the first step is that uh, the rolls that are performing the rolling operation it pulls in the work material they pulls in the work material by the effect of friction and once the work material enters into this gap they apply the compressive forces and reduces the thickness of the material so let's suppose we have a this roll we have this roll and that has a radius of r and a slab is being compressed between the rolls such that the width of the slab initial width of the slab is w naught and the initial thickness is h naught or t naught whatever you you would like to write initially it has some velocity of v naught and uh, it has some velocity after passing through the roll that is vf then there is a contact length as you can observe here there is a contact length of between the roll and the workpiece there is a contact length here between the roll and the workpiece right so this is the contact length that is L 
and we have some final thickness WF and the final uh, final width WF and the final thickness TF or HF then you can see here uh, there will be an angle of contact uh, between the roll and the workpiece there is a roll gap that is uh, what is a roll gap that uh, distance from the entry zone to the exit zone right a distance between the entry zone to the exit zone that is the roll gap we have frictional forces that are exerting during this contact length in along this whole contact length right and there will be some torque on the rolls obviously and they will be using some power as well so this is how it works we have some initial width dimension of the workpiece we have some final dimension of the workpiece there's a contact length which we need to determine what is the contact length between the work and the roll workpiece and the roll there is some angle at which the roll is entering into the uh, this gap between the at which the workpiece is entering into the gap between the rolls and there is a roll gap that is a distance between the entry zone and the exit zone and here the frictional forces uh, are actually working to pull the workpiece into the gap so let's start with the analysis of the rolling so we have the first one the draft while performing the rolling operation the first thing uh, we consider is the draft especially the flat rolling so what is the draft draft is the amount of thickness reduction draft is amount of thickness reduction and that is equals to initial thickness minus final thickness right so that is the initial thickness and this one is the final thickness then the second thing we second terminology that is a reduction ratio and that is represented by r and it is equals to draft divided by the initial thickness or we can write simply write as t not minus tf this is the reduction ratio so it is simply a draft expressed as a fraction of the starting stock thickness so when the series of rolling operations are performed when the series of operations are performed reduction is taken as a sum of drafts divided by the total thickness so uh, there is a type of the rolling operation in which uh, the thickness is reduced gradually thickness is reduced gradually so how does it occur we have series of rolling operation that is taking place so how do we calculate the reduction it is taken as a sum of draft here here and here and divide by the total thickness the total thickness okay this is how we calculate the draw reduction ratio when there is a series of rolling operation send while performing the rolling operation obviously our uh, dimensions are changing but the volume is constant so by the constancy of volume we can write it as t naught into the initial width into the initial length equals to final thickness into the final width into the final length right and there is a thing once when we say that the thickness of this is being reduced so obviously it is being in uh, the some other dimension is also being changed because if the thickness is reducing 
in uh, in this direction if the thickness is being reduced it means some other dimension is all is, is being increased uh, because the volume is constant so it do occurs in the case of the rolling and uh, some empirical observation is that after each roll pass the strip thickness reduces whereas the width increases uh, you can say the strip thickness or the slab thickness whereas the width increases and that is approximately it increases by approximately 2% so WF equals to 1.02 of W0 So WF is equals to 1.02 of W0. So this uh, increase in the width of the material, the workpiece during the rolling operation, that is known as a spreading. That is, it is called as a spreading. Right? Material is spreading along the way. So there is a spreading during the rolling operation. There is a reduction in thickness but at the same time the width of the material increases so there's empirical observation how much in it increase in a single pass so after each roll pass so it is about each pass uh, when we are performing the rolling operation so it occurs that we pass the material one time then we again pass it another time then we so and so forth so we pass the work piece between the rolls multiple times so in each pass uh, there's empirical observation that the width of the work piece increases by 2% so the final width after each pass would be 2% uh, greater than the initial width so this is known as a spreading so once uh, we have the cons constant volume so the volumetric rate would be constant uh, before and passing the roll and after passing the roll so we can simply divide it by the time so we, we can write it as uh, t naught w naught into v naught initial velocity into t f w f into v f right because we have divided by time to get the volumetric rate and that length by time it becomes a velocity so we have initial velocity and the final velocity of the material of the workpiece in the last slide as we have seen if we see here in this region the roll contact the work along an arc right the roll contacts the work along an arc defined by the angle uh, this angle alpha right so each roll has a radius as we have seen each roll has its own radius and its rotational speed uh, uh, gives its the rotational speed gives the surface velocity of vr so this is vr is the velocity of the roll uh, which we have find out using the rotational speed of the roll and this velocity is obviously greater than the velocity of the workpiece before entry into the gap right and but it is less than the velocity of the workpiece after passing through the gap and as we know that the metal flow is continuous there's a continuous flow of metal between the rolls so this change in velocity of the workpiece before and after it gradually occurs right so it gradually like it was uh, lower before and it has uh, it is higher than the roll speed after passing through it so obviously let's suppose if we have the vr like this at this point we have vr and this is our v naught and our v naught is increasing and at some point it will be equal to vr and after passing through the roll it will be greater than the 
VR. So we have it bigger than the VR. Right. So obviously there will be a point in this contact length in this uh, the region of contact there will be a point in at which the v naught the velocity or the velocity of the workpiece would be equal to the velocity of the roll so th that point that one point is termed as a no slip point right so that point along this contact length so let's suppose our workpiece work piece has entered into the roll gap. Now the velocity of the workpiece is increasing. Its force is also increasing. So there will be a point at which uh, uh, the workpiece uh, will have the same velocity as the uh, roll, the roll that is performing the rolling operation. So our V would be equals to V R, and that point is termed as a no slip point, or also known as a neutral point. On either side of the, this point, slipping and friction occurs. So, uh, why it is called as a no slip point? Because it has the maximum friction. Uh, it has the maximum friction here. So, such that and so that the velocity have become equal. They are moving at the same speed. So, there is no slipping occur because when, uh, if you observe the rolling operation, when the slab. passes between the roll and as we know the roll speed roll speed is greater than v is greater than the velocity of the uh, the workpiece so obviously there will be some slipping occurring here and there is not a perfectly uh, contact interlock contact so there will be some friction slipping occur but <clears throat> at a single point there is no slipping and that is from the no slip point and at that point v r becomes equals to v right so the amount of slip that occurs between the roll and the work piece so we can write it as the amount of slip that occurs between the roll and the work piece as v f minus v r the velocity of the roll divided by the v r right where s is termed as the forward slip and we have vf is the you can say exit velocity of work part and vr is the roll speed right so this is what the neutral point is neutral point the point where uh, there is no slipping occur and why there is no slipping occur because the velocity of the roll becomes exactly equal to the velocity of the workpiece at that point now uh, moving towards analysis of the rolling operation so the what kind of strain that would be acting on the workpiece or what would be useful for us actually as we have discussed in the last chapter that uh, in the deformation process or the metal forming process the prime uh, we primarily concentrate on the true strain because that is what is used to calculate the flow stress and what was the flow stress the stress that is required to continue the deformation so in the rolling operation we, there's a requirement to uh, continue the deformation process to continue the deformation while performing the rolling operation so the true strain in this let's suppose this is our rolling operation so the true strain we can write it as strain equals to ln of t naught by tf I mean, and as you can see here uh, the pressure is being applied gradually there is no impact load by the rolls the rolls are not applying uh, impact loading on the workpiece rather the pressure is being applied gradually so what kind of flow stress will we'll be considering for the rolling operation that would be the average flow stress right so what was the average flow stress that was equals to strength coefficient into the strain hardening into strain into the strain into the exponent strain hardening divide by 
1 plus n so the average flow stress is used to calculate the force and power of rolling however there is a limit to the maximum possible draft right uh, what was the draft draft was a difference between the initial thickness and the final thickness so it is not the case that you apply you keep on applying the pressure and it will give you the draft value the draft value will keep on increasing there is a limit to the maximum possible draft that can be produced by the given role right so how do we calculate the maximum possible draft uh, that is equals to So the maximum possible draft is termed as d max equals to m square r this is the maximum possible draft that can be produced in a single pass so it's a maximum possible draft that can be produced in the single pass so what were the drafts difference between the initial and the final thickness right so here we can write it as here m is a friction coefficient while the r is the roll radius as you can see here right so the coefficient of friction uh, in this case of rolling depends upon the lubrication that we are using here and the work material what kind of material that is being used and the working temperature obviously if it's a hot working there will be more friction um, right uh, so in the case of the cold working the value of m in the case of the cold working the value of m is equals to 0 0.1 in the case of hot working this friction increases so we have a friction coefficient of 0 0.4 in the case of the warm working we take the friction values equals to 0 0.2 hot working because of this friction it is also characterized as it is also called as a sticking because the material starts to adhere to the surface of the rolls the material starts to stick to the surface of the roll or the work or the tool that whatever tool we are using that is why hot working is also termed as a sticking now based on the this flow stress and uh, maximum possible draft we have the dimension of our workpiece so the force rolling force rolling force would be equals to that is flow stress into the area and we have flow stress average flow stress into the width into the length so this is the force that is required to perform the rolling operation so we have an approximated roll force can also be calculated using the width of the work and the contact length uh, or between the rolls and the work so consider the variation of pressure along the contact length obviously there is a pressure variation along the contact length and uh, that is maximum at the neutral point as we have seen in the last uh, slide of a no slip point so the contact pressure reaches maximum at a no slip point then it further reduces there is a entry point we have the exit point So the pressure reaches maximum at the no slip point as you have seen in the last slide.
so here uh, f is the roll force and w is the width of the work being rolled uh, that can be in millimeter or inches or it can be in inches and uh, we have length again the length of the workpiece oh sorry the contact length this is the right contact length between the roll and the workpiece that is also in millimeter or inches so based on this we can see here uh, based on this one we can say the force would be equals to PDL right we know the pressure is uh, force per unit area the stress is also force per unit area so we can calculate based on the pressure as well and from length 0 to maximum length L right and it would be maximum at this point so this force would be maximum at this point so the contact length would be how to calculate the contact length we have that is L equals to under root R T naught minus T F this is the contact length and the uh, torque uh, assuming rolling force is centered on the workpiece uh, we are assuming that the rolling force is perfectly centered on the workpiece as it passes between the rolls uh, and the movement arm would be what will be the movement arm it would be half obviously if the rolling force is centered at the workpiece so the movement arm would be half right so we have force into movement arm that is f into l by 2 or we can write as write it as 0 0.5 into force into the length right that is a torque produced in the roll so the and the power required to drive each roll So the power required to drive each roll uh, as you know the power is a product of the torque and the velocity you can say so we have the torque that is 0 0.5 fl into 2 pi n right and because we are assuming the this is a torque for a single roll this is a torque for the single roll and the power required for each roll but as we know that uh, even the simplest rolling mill consists of uh, two rolls so that torque would be doubled for the power required so our power would be equals to 2 pi n fl so this is the power required to drive the rolls and in this case uh, we have this is the force this is the contact length as we have seen before this is the roll force and this is the number of revolutions for the roll so this is how we can calculate the power so the unit of the power would be joules per second for this power okay now we have uh, true strain we have the flow stress for this one right we have calculated the rolling force 
we have find out the contact length and then the torque produced and the power required so these are six parameters that are used to analyze the rolling operation and the strain that is required to be produced and the consequent flow stress that is required to produce this amount of a strain then the rolling force that will be required to produce such and such a stress values and uh, the contact length based on the uh, rolling the radius of the roll and the thickness of the work part then the torque produced because of this contact length and the force exerted and uh, finally the power required so this is the uh, simple analysis for the rolling operation now the next slide is about the flatness control and the defect in the rolling operation so there is a phenomena that occurs in the rolling operation let's suppose we are performing uh, a flat rolling on a work part this is our work piece this is our work piece and you perform the flat rolling so the force are being applied at these extreme edges right so because of the force at uh, being applied at extreme edges this roll bends right so because and this roll bends so what we get at the it so because of the rolls because of the force that is being applied at the edges of this roll uh, there is a case of the three point bending right we have the load here we have the rejection force here and we have the another uh, force being applied at this extreme edge so because of this the roll bends at a certain curvature so the resultant product we get from this kind of roll is like this one so a product that is thicker at the center while thinner at the edges so to overcome this problem we perform the crowning of the rolls crowning rolls are crowned and what is a crowning that they are uh, made in such a way that the rolls are thicker at the center while they are thinner at the edges so what happens when such rolls are used in the rolling operation and when the products get into the gap and the force is being applied again the roll bends but due to the bending they become flat so ultimately the product we get is flat from top and bottom so this is how we can save the shape of the product uh, due to the bending uh, we can crown the rolls to compensate the uh, roll flexure you can say or the bending of the rolls and ultimately getting this defect in our final product since the roll deflection is proportional to the force applied to the rolls product flatness can also be improved by measure to reduce the roll force so one way is to reduce this defect is by crowning the other way is that because this uh, defect arises not only from this three point bending but also due to the high roll forces so we should find the way out while performing or while designing the rolling operation we should focus the way out to reduce the roll force and when we will perform some numerical analysis or uh, some we will look into some problems of the rolling operation we will see how we can reduce the roll force while designing the rolling operation so now moving towards the shape of the rolling operations the shape of the rolling as we have discussed there are two types of roll the flat ro rolling operation the flat rolling which we have discussed uh, earlier and the shape rolling so in the case of the shape rolling the work is deformed into a contoured cross section rather than a flat so we don't have a flat cross section instead we have some contoured cross section like some specific shape and you know, the gar i beams and different kind of beams we use in during the construction so they are formed by the shape rolling so the accomplish by passing work through rolls that have the reverse of the desired shape obviously if you want to design, get a some shape uh, on our workpiece so we design the roll with the inverse or the reverse of that shape 
the products that I use uh, produce from the shape rolling include the beams or different kind of channels that we use during the construction uh, most common example uh, another common example for this one is the rail tracks and different kind of different profiles of the bars and rods so we have the blooming rods or we can have the edging rolls which uh, take in the work part from the edges we have the roughing horizontal and vertical rolls so we have two horizontal rolls and there are also vertical rolls to rough in the sides of the workpiece we have the intermediate horizontal and vertical rolls again the edging rolls to produce the sharp edges and we have some other finishing rolls so different kind of rolling profile can be shaped based on the type of the uh, product we want to achieve now moving towards type of mills so mill is a you can say a setup on which the rolling is performed so it has uh, two rolls that are uh, designed to apply the pressure to the workpiece that is termed as a rolling mill so it's a massive and expensive equipment so we can have multiple configuration of the rolling mills we can have the two high rolling mills that is a com was most common one we have the two large diameter rolls that are exerting the pressure uh, onto the workpiece we have the three high rolling mills we the two are exerting the pressure and we have a platform here so once the workpiece gets here this platform transfer the workpiece on the upper platform and then the there's another pass on the third row we can have the four high rolling mills uh, in which there are two back rolls and uh, there are two back rolls that are exerting pressure onto the smaller rolls right so that can perform the rolling operation the purpose of that is to reduce the roll force because the diameter would be reduced so we will have the lower roll force required then we have the cluster rolling mill like we have multiple rolls uh, that are used to make strips so we have very uh, the large roll exerting on the smaller one then the smaller one exerting on the further smaller one ultimately we have, we have very small rolls that are exerting pressure the force on the strips so they are used for the thin sheets then you have the tending rolling mills as we have discussed earlier we have a workpiece which have multiple rolls in a series so that is termed as the in which we reduce the thickness of the work part gradually so that is termed as the tending rolling mill so these are some configurations of the rolling mills and this was some uh, in this lecture we have discussed the different numerical analysis uh, perform the analysis of the rolling operation we have this uh, we have seen the uh, how to calculate the rolling force the contact length between the roll and the work bead work part and the uh, power that is required to drive the rolls the torque produced during the rolling operation and the sticking and the frictional effects on the rolling operation so in the next lecture we will be performing some numerical problems uh, regarding the rolling operation.